but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. The normal way that we conduct our lives is we, 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 we reason by analogy. Um, it's, we're doing this because it's like something else that was done, mm -hmm. or it's like what um, other people are doing. Me too but, type ideas. Yeah, it's slight, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's slight iterations take, yeah. on, on, on a theme. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, it, cause it's, it's, it's kind of mentally easier to reason by analogy rather than from first principles. But by first principles is kind of a physics way of looking at the world. And what that really means is you kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths and, and say, okay, what are we sure is true or, or as sure as possible is true? And then reason up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot more mental energy. Um, Give me but, an example of that. Like, what's one thing that you've you've done that on that you feel has worked for you? Sure. So, um, somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that battery packs are really expensive, and that's just the way they'll always be because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's that's pretty dumb, you know, because if if uh, if you applied that reasoning to anything new, that ha then you, you wouldn't be able to, to ever get to that new thing. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it's like you can't say, oh, you know, horses, well, nobody wants a car because horses are great and we're used to them and they can eat grass and there's lots of grass all over the place and, you know, there's not like a, there's no gasoline that people can buy, so people are never going never get, never to get cars. Right. And, and, and for batteries, they, they would say, oh, it's going to cost, Six hundred dollars um, uh, per kilowatt hour, and so it's not going to be much better than that in the future. And you say, no, okay, well, what what are, what are the batteries made of? So, so first principles would be to say, okay, what are the material constituents of the batteries? Mm -hmm. What is the spot market value of the material constituents? So you can say, okay, it's got cobalt, nickel, aluminum, carbon, um, and some polymers for separation, and a steel can. So break that down in, on a material basis and say, okay, what? If we bought that on the London Metal Exchange, what would each of those things cost? Like, oh, geez, uh, it's like $80 uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you just need to think of clever ways to take those materials and combine them into the shape of a battery cell, and you can have batteries that are much, much cheaper than anyone realizes. Uh, so the first, for you know, any kind of technology problem, you have to sort of just make sure you're not violating physics um and you know uh first principles analysis i think is something that can be applied to really any walk of life uh, any anything really it's just it's it's really just saying um you know let's let's boil something down to the most fundamental uh principles the things that we are most confident are true at a foundational level and that sets your at your sets your axiomatic base and then you reason up from there and then you cross-check your conclusion against the the axiomatic truths. And then uh, another good physics tool is thinking about things in the limit. If you if you take a particular thing and you uh, scale it to a very large number or to a very small number, how does how do things change? Like let's say say take an example of like um, like manufacturing, which I think is just a very underrated problem. Um, and and uh, like I said, it, it's it's much harder to take a, 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 an advanced technology product and bring it into volume manufacturing than it is to design it in the first place by orders of magnitude. So, um, so let's say you're trying to figure out is, um, like why is this, this uh, part or product expensive? Is it um, because of something fundamentally foolish that we're doing or is it because our volume is too low? And so then you say, okay, well, what if our volume was a million units a year? Is it still expensive? That's what I mean by thinking about things in the limit. If it's still expensive at a million units a year, then volume is not the reason why your thing is expensive. There's something fundamental about the design. design. You could change the design to change change the part to be something that is uh, uh, not fundamentally expensive.